Now I'm joined by Sarah McCoy, a musician who's attending this year's Akbank Jazz Festival here in Istanbul. The American musician has an eclectic taste and says after so many years living on the edge, she's come to terms with her own dark side. So let's talk about this, Sarah. <laughs> Welcome to <laughs> Showcase. Yeah, great to have you it. here. Okay. okay. So living on the edge. Mm -hmm. I mean, what exactly was that like? Because you were, you were, I mean... You were hitchhiking from one place to another in America. I mean, you were sort of like traveling, always on the go, always on the road, uh, with a reference to Jack Kerouac. So tell us a how book that I went. never read. You never read on the no, road. No, it's it's like one of those things where you're like you're doing it, so why read about it? I don't know. That probably makes less sense now that I just said it out loud. But no, I probably was like, it's just too loaded for you. This whole book. No, it was also know. a man's adventure. I was not having a man's adventure. Okay, how was the woman's adventure? Well, it was actually probably less glorious, to be honest with you. You know, it's, it sounds all fun because you're chasing dreams and stuff mm -hmm. and you're young and whatever, but... What dreams were you chasing back then? You know, we said we were chasing dreams. I was running. Running away from your dark side? I was running away from things that I didn't want to accept. What do you think was a turning point in your career? Because... Um, Along the way, you, you, I mean, you were in California, New Orleans, and then you ended up in Paris. But then, I think maybe in Paris, I don't know, but you tell us, what was the turning point in your career, you think? I mean, I feel like I'm always turning around with turning points, but <laughs> the, the best thing I ever did was move to New Orleans. Um, it was home immediately for me. I found community immediately. I was completely saturated in music all of the time. And I met incredible musicians constantly. It was, um, it was something I'll always miss if I'm not there. Um, and I also, I met my, at the time, um, he became my manager, Bruno, who was essentially my connection to France. And uh, it's just, it's such a, a, an international place. People come there to find music. That um, I think that's really how it started mm -hmm. was was being seen by an entire international audience that was just completely rotating people that would come back <laughs> to find me for years and things like that. And now you're settled in Paris. Yeah, your life is uh, much different than how it used to be. So um, when I listen to your music, I feel like well, this is so different than what we hear in media, I mean, pop music, auto-tuned, electronic, yeah. hip-hop inspired. How does this make you feel? I mean, do you have a sort of like fear of being not successful enough or do you feel like your music belongs to 2019? Um, that's a very interesting question. I, um, I've actually had problems my entire career because I've been labeled as very genreless. Blues fans don't label me as blues. Jazz fans don't label me as jazz. Uh, pop fans don't, obviously. It's, I'm not really pop music, but it's like, what, the, what is this? Um, and uh, it, it does make things difficult because, like, where do you market it? Who is your crowd? Um, but the main thing is, is I'm, I, I try to talk about growth and emotional intelligence, like personal growth and emotional intelligence. Um, and honestly, that's something that I achieve personally through and have begun to achieve through through music and also a lot of hard work. Uh, there is this amazing um, quote that I saw in your website. I really loved it. You said something like, I want people to know that the demons inside of them actually exist in other people too. And this is what I'm trying to do with my music. So uh, please answer the question in the light of this um, quote. Yeah, well, I mean... It's not to glorify the monster, it's, it's to shine light. We, th this is what I was saying when I was like saying I was running from things and the more you run from things, the more you actually build bad mental coping mechanisms and behaviors to try to continue to hide that. And I feel like the moment that you shine your light on your monster, you can start working on it, um, acknowledging it and when you do that, it's a very lonely process because mm -hmm. you're, you're isolating yourself with the worst of yourself to work on that. And it's hard, but if you see other people doing it and other people talking about it... And uh, singing about it. And singing about it, you know, it's just the discussion around, like, um, doing better in life 
and that not having to be a monetary yeah. thing. Very important, very key. Great, Sarah McCoy, thank you so much for joining us on Showcase today. Yeah. It was great to have you. It was a pleasure. Thanks.